Read by Dale Grothman. The Highwayman by Lord Dunsinay. Tom o' the Rhodes had ridden his last ride and was now alone in the night. From where he was, a man might see the white recumbent sheep and the black outline of the lonely downs and the gray line of the further and lonelier downs beyond them or in the hollows far below him out of the pitiless wind he might see the gray smoke of hamlets arising from black valleys but all alike were black to the eyes of tom and all the sounds were silence in his ears only his soul struggled to slip from the iron chains and to pass southwards into paradise and the wind blew and blew for tom tonight had naught but the wind to ride they had taken his true black horse on the day when they took from him the green fields and the sky men's voices and the laughter of women and had left him alone with chains around his neck to swing in the wind forever and the wind blew and blew but the soul of tom o the rhodes was nipped by the cruel chains and whenever it struggled to escape it was beaten backwards into the iron collar by the wind that blows from paradise from the south and swinging there by the neck there fell away old sneers from off his lips and scoffed that he had long since scoffed at god fell from his tongue and there rotted old bad lusts out of his heart and from his fingers the stains of deeds that were evil and they all fell to the ground and grew there in pallid rings and clusters and when these ill things had all fallen away tom's soul was clean again as his early love had found it a long while since in spring and it swung up in the wind with the bones of tom and with his old torn coat and rusty chains and the wind blew and blew and ever and anon the souls of the sepulchred came from consecrated acres would go by beating up the wind to paradise past the gallows tree and past the soul of tom that might not go free night after night tom watched the sheep upon the downs with empty hollow sockets until his dead hair grew and covered his poor face and hid the shame of it from the sheep and the wind blew and blew sometimes on gusts of the wind came someone's tears and beat and beat against the iron chains but could not rust them through and the wind blew and blew and every evening all the thoughts that tom had ever uttered came flocking in from doing their work in the world the work that might not cease and sat along the gallows branches and chirruped to the soul of tom the soul that might not go free all the thoughts that he had ever uttered and the evil thoughts rebuked the soul that bore them because they might not die and all those that he had uttered the most furtively chirruped the loudest and the shrillest in the branches all the night and all the thoughts that tom had ever thought about himself now pointed at the wet bones and mocked the old torn coat but the thoughts that he had thought of others were the only companions that his soul had to soothe it in the night as it swung to and fro and they twittered to the soul and cheered the poor dumb thing that could have dreams no more till there came a murderous thought and drove them all away and the wind blew and blew paul archbishop of alloy and veyennes lay in his white sepulchre of marble facing full to the southward toward paradise and over his tomb was sculpted the cross of christ that his soul might have repose no wind howled here as it howled in the lonely treetops up upon the downs but came with gentle breezes orchard scented over the lowlands from paradise from the southwards 
and played about forget-me-nots and grasses in the consecrated land where lay the reposeful round the sepulchre of paul archbishop of alloy and veyence easy it was for a man's soul to pass from such a sepulchre and flitting low over remembered fields to come upon the garden lands of paradise and find eternal ease and the wind blew and blew in a tavern of foul repute three men were lapping gin their names were joe and will and the gypsy paglioni none other names had they for of whom their fathers were they had no knowledge but only dark suspicions sin had caressed and stroked their faces often with its paw but the face of Puglioni, sin had kissed all over the mouth and chin. Their food was robbery, and their pastime murder. All of them had incurred the sorrow of God and the enmity of man. They sat at a table with a pack of cards before them, all greasy with marks of cheating thumbs, and they whispered to one another over their gin, but so low that the landlord of the tavern at the other end of the room could only hear muffled oaths and knew not by whom they swore or what they said these three were the staunchest friends that ever god had given unto a man and he to whom their friendship had been given had nothing else besides save some bones that swung in the wind and rain and an old torn coat and iron chains and a soul that might not go free but as the night wore on the three friends left their gin and stole away and crept down to the graveyard where rested in his sepulchre paul archbishop of alloy and venet at the edge of the graveyard but outside the consecrated ground they dug a hasty grave two digging while one watched in the wind and rain and the worms that crept in the unhallowed ground wondered and waited and the terrible hour of midnight came upon them with its fears and found them still beside the place of tombs and the three friends trembled at the horror of such an hour in such a place and shivered in the wind and drenching rain and still worked on and the wind blew and blew soon they had finished and at once they left the hungry grave with all its worms unfed and went over to the wet fields stealthily but in haste leaving the place of tombs behind them in the midnight and as they went they shivered each man as he shivered cursing the rain aloud and so they came to the spot where they had hidden a ladder and a lantern there they held a long debate whether they should light the lantern or whether they should go without it for fear of the king's men but in the end it seemed to them better that they should have the light of their lantern and risk being taken by the king's men and hanged than that they should come suddenly face to face in the darkness with whatever one might come face to face with a little after midnight about the gallows tree on three roads in england whereupon it was not the wont of folks to go their ways in safety travellers to-night went unmolested but the three friends walked several paces wide of the king's highway approaching the gallows tree and will carried the lamp and joe the ladder but puglioni carried a great sword wherewith to do the work that must be done when they came close they saw how bad was the case with tom for little remained of the fine figure of a man and nothing at all of his great resolute spirit only as they came they thought they heard a whimpering cry like the sound of a thing that was caged and unfree to and fro to and fro in the winds swung the bones and soul of tom for the sins that he had sinned on the king's highway against the laws of the king and with shadows and a lantern through the darkness at the peril of their lives came the three friends that his soul had won 
before it swung in chains thus the seeds of tom's own soul that he had sown all his life had grown into a gallows tree that bore in season iron chains in clusters while the careless seeds that he had strewn here and there a kindly jest and a few merry words had grown into a triple friendship that would not desert his bones then the three set the ladder against the tree and puglioni went up with his sword in his right hand and at the top of it he reached up and began to hack at the neck below the iron collar presently the bones and the old coat and the soul of tom fell down with a rattle and a moment afterwards his head which had watched so long alone swung clear from the swinging chain these things will and joe gathered up and puglioni came running down his ladder and they heaped upon its rungs the terrible remains of their friend and hastened away wet with the rain with the fear of phantoms in their heart and horror lying before them on the ladder by two o'clock they were down again in the valley out of the bitter wind but they went on past the open grave into the graveyard all among the tombs and with their lantern and their ladder and the terrible thing upon it which kept their friendship still then these three that had robbed the law of its due and proper victim still sinned on for what was still their friend and levered out the marble slabs from the sacred sepulchre of paul archbishop of alloy and veillance and from it they took the very bones of the archbishop himself and carried them away to the eager grave that they had left and put them in and shoveled back the earth but all that lay on the ladder they placed with a few tears within the great white sepulchre under the cross of christ and put back the marble slabs thence the soul of tom arising hallowed out of the sacred ground went at dawn down the valley and lingering a little about his mother's cottage and old haunts of childhood passed on and came to the wide lands beyond the clustered homesteads there there met with all the kindly thoughts that the soul of tom had ever had and they flew and sang beside it all the way southward until at last with singing all about it it came to paradise but will and joe and the gypsy paglioni went back to their gin and robbed and cheated again in the tavern of foul repute and knew not that in their sinful lives they had sinned one sin at which the angels smiled the end of the highwayman by lord dunsinay